Hello everyone <clears throat> and welcome to our Tuesday vlog. It's a very nice day and um, today is my late shift so I have a bit of time in the morning to do things I want to do. A bit of self-care and so forth. So today's topic is who's more important, the children or the partner? in terms of who comes who comes first yeah in the attention um that's that's um an important question because um actually quite a few clients they say for instance how stressful their life is and um they have busy jobs they maybe they work and the partner works as well and they have to look after the kids. That's all fair enough. Um, but w what happens very often is um, <coughs> that, that the parents only care for the children and make the children the center of, of their attention. And the partner is, so to speak, um, becomes like a like a roommate. Yeah? So basically, they lead separate lives, and um, well, that may that may have a, a, a deeper reason, but um, for instance, um, I remember studying a family constellation it was there was a clear sentence who has precedence over who and um, the founder and pioneer of a family constellation Bert Hellinger always said well it's it's the partner who has precedence because um, the, the partner was before the kids so <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's an interesting way of uh, putting it uh, but it means um, w without the, the partner you wouldn't have kids in the first place uh, and, and also uh, the family unit is constituted uh, by the couple yeah? and um, if you have a good relationship with, y with your spouse yeah, the children feel safe and the couple can provide a safe space for the, uh, for the children and it's probably w one, of, one of the main tips um, so if it's possible, uh, if you have a nurturing, uh, a safe couple relationship, it's the best thing that you can do for your kids. Yeah? But of course, it's easier said than done. So let's let's have a, look, a little bit of a look into uh, what's happening for couples. And uh, at the end, I, I will also talk to uh, what happens when when the couple uh, splits up and they they have new partner who has then precedence. Who is then more important, the kids or the new partner? So, <laughs> interesting thing. Um, I mean, just the uh, divorce rates, uh, forty-five, fifty percent, um, indicate that this is a real issue. And uh, yes. I see that uh, all the time too. Yeah, separate separate lives. Um, I mean, sometimes it's um, it's so easy to get distracted by by work or the, the there's money pressure. So both people, um, both partners have to work, and uh, that can uh, of course put a strain on the relationship as well um, <coughs> but if we then just focus on uh, on the kids it sends an, a very interesting message to the kids yeah so they first of all they, they might feel either a little bit um, uh, ab abandoned or ne neglected yeah when when uh, parents work uh, long hours and they stay in, uh, in, in before or after school care um, but if then the focus is uh, on, on the kids texting them around and so forth uh, they may feel a little bit helicoptered yeah? 
so a uh, little bit over supervised and uh, that's not not good for them as well for their sort of de development of uh, autonomy but it also sends a message to the kids that uh, marriage is not a place of fun which is probably not the message you you want to deliver to your uh, children and uh, as a as a third point i would i would say um if you focus on the children it gives them a false sense of importance yeah so i would put it that way that uh, every, every child has has the need to be small smaller than than the parents to be and uh, the need to be guided by by the parents and uh, too much focus on the kids needs and wants uh, needs i'm okay with but with wants i wouldn't be okay with uh, gives them a sense of important importance that is undue and uh, gives them power that is not good for them and not for the family as a whole yeah. um, so often, often couples um, or in individuals that come to counseling um, and aren't happy uh, with whatever is happening in their life or uh, um, the, the marriage is about to fall apart, um, they often have a have a good reason that uh, uh, the sort of the marital relationship is not where, where it should be or where it ideally should be yeah so I think number one problem in uh, couples relationships is I would say it's the blame game or the game uh, I'm right <laughs> and you are wrong <laughs> so I think that's definitely a uh, number one of the charts um, and um, I mean, pretty much all the clients either they display it, and uh, or or they report yes, that's that's spot on. So um, last week I had someone who who I've seen for a number of years actually, um, on and off, and uh, he he confirmed it. Uh, it's a it's a pattern that they couldn't resolve even even though. Um, he he was aware of it, and he said, "Yeah, that's that's the root of all the misery in the relationship." And um, I will talk a little bit about uh, uh, how to resolve it, uh, what's what's required, or what options are there. I mean, we we just can't resolve everything, um, but it it definitely takes two to tango. Yeah, so the the willingness to um, to work on couples issues on how we communicate that we communicate respectfully that we listen to each other that we try to understand each other um, you can do it by yourself yeah but uh, it, it's it's a tough it's a tough job yeah. so basically what what uh, what I think a problem is that um, um, in the blame game, somebody is is not owing their uh, their contribution to the problem. Yeah, and um, so as a therapist, I always say e each of you carries fifty percent uh, responsibility, and uh, I think that's 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 fair enough. Yeah, um, but that's certainly required. Um, that somebody owes owns the, the the story or owns the, the contribution to the problem because it's a co-creation of of a problem yeah so each partner brings their own baggage i should say from the family of origin into the marriage and um, there it is reenacted and um, so we have to res take responsibility for our own history and uh, then uh, something can um, something good can result from that so yeah another form of um, not communicating well is of course um, nagging um, that can be very sort of dis destructive 
or when uh, sort of every little problem discussed be becomes a big issue and uh, straight the communication goes into fundamental issues. We call it generalizing uh, the, the problem. It's really important to be very specific about what you want and what you don't want. So which, which brings me to uh, another topic which is um, sort of we need to create boundaries. Yeah? We need to let the partner know what, what we want but also what we don't want. So uh, which enables the partner to respect our boundaries really. Um, so it might not always be easy to hear a no but it's, it's definitely the clear message and we, we can deal with that. Yeah? So, <coughs> yes, uh, clear boundaries is, um, or setting boundaries is definitely the opposite of passive aggressive behavior, which basically means I say yes, but somehow in my actions I, I do no, so I, and I undermine um, my, my consent to whatever I consented to. That's hard to deal with. Um, and these, these kind of things, so whether it's uh, the blame game or I'm right, you're wrong um, a kind of game, it, it leads to um, serious resentments which might be troublesome to, to dissolve down the, the track. Um, so according to um, sort of a renowned researcher, uh, criticism and stonewalling are definitely the, the uh, most uh, critical factors and hi highly predictive of uh, a divorce. Yeah. So not everything can be resolved in couples therapy. Um, however, couples therapy can be a fantastic way to identify, yeah, to explore what's what's actually going on, and come to a place that is uh, more amicable. So, yeah, so there's. I would like to talk a little bit about what what couples therapy can do. Um, <coughs> so and yeah, usually I would I would start with um, something called intimacy starts with I. So <laughs> we need to be sort of uh, aware of ourselves, what we want and what we don't want. We need to be a person in our own right, and then we can encounter the other person. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, it, it's it's not going to work out. Yeah, so I have to know who I am. I I need to like myself, even if that sounds a little bit of a cliche. Um, basically, I need to like myself, and then I can like the other person. I can encounter them. So we need that counterpart. That's that's really important. And if somebody, uh, if one of the partners can't do that for whatever reason maybe there's something traumatic in the in the background or they they didn't learn how to uh, be themselves yeah so that they didn't have a great um, autonomy development then this certainly um, um, creates a problem in um, in the relationship and that, that can be that can be addressed so um, yeah, intimacy is, uh, or lack thereof, is probably a number one problem in, in, in couples. We need to learn how to set boundaries and how to spend pleasurable time with uh, one another. Hi, Gawela. Thanks for joining. That's good. I know you like that topic too. <laughs> um, so and and then it's uh, it's really about ex exploring the issue, yeah. The um, sort of the negative cycle the the couple is um, is trapped in, and to just go from there, yeah. Uh, to allow the couple to create a, a, a safe space, a safe environment, so 
each partner can be vulnerable. Um, I think it's easy to imagine that this is not a, uh, a process that can happen in two, three, four or five sessions. Couples therapy doesn't have to be sort of uh, high frequent, but I think it should be uh, should go over a longer period of time, one or, one or two years, um, to be slow enough um, to to really gain gain traction. Yeah. yeah, what else is there? I mean, there's there's so much more to say. Um, it's about exercising, of course. Um, yeah, you go to the gym to get physically fit uh, and you, you go to the psych gym or do an exercise that the psychologist suggests to you in, in order to practice uh, what's needed. Yeah, um, That's really important. And before I forget, um, when, say, a couple splits up, separates, yeah, and there, there are children involved and um, the, the partners find, find a new partner. So who is then more important? The, the new partner, the new couple or the children? So, and in this case, it's the other way around. So the children are more important because um, they were there first. Yeah? And this is also super, super important. If we don't get the priorities right, uh, things will go pear-shaped. It's almost uh, like a recipe. Yeah? And I've seen that many times, so particularly when children come for, for counseling and parents have new partners and they're more important and so forth. So that's really, that's really hurtful for, for those children. Hmm. Right, what, what did I say? Uh, it takes two to tango, yeah, that's certainly true. Um, yeah, the, the metaphor of, of tango is actually um, also a metaphor for the therapy. Um, the eight steps of the tango can also be sort of uh, um, a guideline for eight steps in uh, couples therapy, but it's definitely worthwhile uh, another vlog a vlog in its own right. So, yeah. I'm gonna have a coffee now and um, I wish you very well. I catch you again on Thursday. And let's see, if you have a, if you have a, a question, pop it into the uh, comment, comment box. Um, if you think somebody would benefit from this little info vlog then uh, please like or share um, tag a friend in there so it gets distributed so wishing you a fantastic uh, Tuesday and see you again soon bye